On this episode of Whistle Talk, I sit down with Jason Boatman, a passionate and seasoned umpire hailing from the East Alabama Football Officials Association. In addition to his on-field prowess, Jason is also deeply involved in the recruitment and training of officials in Alabama. Jason's dedication to the sport of football and his unwavering commitment to excellence makes him an indispensable asset to the East Alabama football community. I'm Mike D. the Referee, and here we go. Are you a football fan? Have you ever found yourself wondering what in the world was that ref thinking? Well, Mike D, the referee, is here to help. Join me on Whistle Talk as I talk to professionals on the field and in the booth to help you understand what is going on inside the mind of a football official. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our next episode of Whistle Talk. This is Mike D, the referee. Tonight, I got a special guest, uh, special. Mr. Jason Boatman from East Alabama. I'm going to pass it off to, to Jason, let him uh, explain a little bit of his background and uh, where he's from. But it's my first out-of-state official that I've got, so this is a special night for me and uh, hopefully a nice night for Jason. So, Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me, man. Like you said, I'm from Absolutely. East Alabama football officials. Uh, over here in East Alabama, I'm between Birmingham and Atlanta. I have been officiating since 07, so what, 15, 16, 17 years? When you're having fun, you don't keep up with the years, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So I've always been an um, I've always been an umpire. Um, 2022 was probably the best year I've ever had. I was able to work a 5A state championship game in, at Auburn University, home of the Auburn Tigers. But being from Alabama, i got to say roll tide. I was going to ask you, a, a war eagle you, or roll tide, so you just answered it. It's roll tide. It's roll tied all the way. I mean, <laughs> hang on, let me see. There's my there's my back screen. My, there my you phone. go. There you go. <laughs> so uh, you, you mentioned that you're an umpire, um, and one of the things that really intrigued me when when we first corresponded, um, you were mentioning that you are you're a board member uh, for your association, but you're also you have a title that you are a trainer for umpires. Is that correct? Yes, I train. I'm one of the trainers for our association for our umpires. So that's fantastic. Uh, as we as we was talking, there's a lot, and you know this yourself, Mike. There's a lot that goes into training a new official. You got your keys. You got to count. You got to you know get in position. You get five to seven. You get seven to eight yards. Five to seven. Uh, you know if you're working a junior high or a JB or up to the varsity level. Uh, another thing, and. We, I hadn't even talked to you about this. I don't line up in the same position. I never line up in the same position. I've got yep. hit before because I've had the ball come right over my head. I can feel the air coming off of it. Uh, and yep. so, and I don't ever get set. I don't personally get set to the offense line set. I mean, I'm a big guy, okay? But flip them lights on included. on Friday night. Flip them lights on on Friday night. I can get where I need to be. Trust me. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, Alabama football, I mean, it, it's it's renowned around the country. Just uh, tell me a little bit just about some, some of the some of the clashes. I mean, uh, be, be, between Alabama football, Texas football, Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and I'm throwing New Jersey into that mix of being a small state. We put out some really, really good football. Tell me, tell me what, give me a Friday Night Lights type of experience. What, what is it like there? Ooh, man, that's a tough one there. You know, we got, in my association, we work all from a 1A to a, the biggest in our, that, that we cover to 6A. Okay. Uh, so I have been somewhere out in the country. They hang 10, metal 10 off the side and beat it with cans. <laughs> and it's loud, ringing, loudest place I've ever been before, probably. And, you know, you just a great atmosphere. You go to some places, you pull up, and they already got the music blaring. I'm not yep. sure about New Jersey, but we have to be there an hour before kickoff. Same. So you get there, you get out of car, you know, you stretch, and you might drove an hour to get there or 45 minutes to get there, and you put your flags and your whistles and your radio, getting all that jazz out of the car, and you all you hear is thunderstruck, ACDC, thunderstruck. <laughs> like you're thinking. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah, I mean, with all the years of me being a coach and, and different things like that, being an official still keeps me involved in it, and I still I still get amped up on game day. I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm walking out onto the field, the music going. It's it's getting me pumped up and ready to go too. So I, I still love that atmosphere. 
I still get butterflies on Fridays. Thankful for my regular job, I'm off every other Friday. So one Friday I can relax. The other Friday that I have to work, I get off at 2.30. So if okay. I'm going to leave at 12, all I got to do is take two hours of annual leave. I'm out. <laughs> that's beauty. That's that's awesome. So now you were just talking about pregame stuff. You're, you're getting yourself ready and stuff like that. You mentioned radios. So in New Jersey recently, uh, it's been about four or five years now. I forget <laughs> off the top of my head. We are now all mic'd up together as as a crew. Um, we all have a headset so that we're able to communicate with each other on the field. What is it like for you guys in Alabama? Same thing? Yeah, absolutely. We use radios as well. Uh, we started it, I want to say probably five, six, maybe seven years ago. We started it. So okay. uh, I think it's a great, I think it's a great tool. And then plus our ECO clock operators have got them as well. Yes. Some schools we have to take chain game, the chain hubs, chains and everything, and they've got them as well. Okay. So yeah, our, our chain crew doesn't have to wear them because uh, in New Jersey, a lot of times our chain crew are parents from the homeschool. So we got to kind of educate them on the fly. Uh, other school districts will pay and have a uh, carded officials on the chain crew, but sometimes we'll keep them on. If I'm on the chains, I'll, I'll sometimes keep them on just so I can hear what's going on. Because uh, as you and I were talking uh, before we started rolling here, you're, you're always learning something. So if I'm working the chain game, I can possibly still keep my ears in and see what's going on and hear what's going on. I'm not going to open the mic up at that point in time though. Absolutely. Yeah. We're like that. I mean, well, I can only think of, one school right off the top of my head that we had to provide a chain gang for on Fridays out of 12, out of 12 or 15 contracts we had last year. Okay. So now, again, uh, pre, pre-show, pre you and I were, were, were just chatting a little bit. Here in New Jersey, we're predominantly a, a six-man officiating crew. Um, we typically got the umpire and referee in the middle of the field. Then we have our two short wings at the line of scrimmage. And then we'll have our two deep wings between 20 to 22 yards deep, but they're on the sideline. Um, when we get into our st- uh, state semifinals and our championship games, the state will assign us a seventh man so that we have the center of the field covered. Um, pre-production, you guys, you were talking about, you guys are typically either a five-man or a seven-man crew. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We are a five-man or seven-man. The state gives the, cho- gives the school their choice up until the second round of the playoffs. Second round of the playoffs and then to the finals, it has to be a seven man. But the regular season, the school gets their choice if they want a five man or a seven man. Okay. Do you have a preference? Do you prefer anyone better than the other? I mean, it don't really matter to me because as an umpire, five man or seven man, it don't really change. Nothing changes for me. Yeah, our keys really don't change too much either for for us uh, from the seven man. Uh, the only thing that I did find when working the state championship game, having that seventh man, having the extra set of eyes behind me, it kind of kind of felt almost like a security blanket uh, if I wasn't going to get run over by a safety or something like that. <laughs> it's uh, being in the middle of the action. You and I have both have uh, been been struck a couple times here and there. I'm sure. Oh yeah, I've been rolled up, stomped, trampled one play one time, and I should have come out, but. Hard head mule like me, I didn't want to come out. I just stayed in there. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the nature of the beast of being an umpire. <laughs> as, so I now, say, as I said earlier, we we control the chaos in the middle, so you got to be there. Yeah, um, and and we're going to dive into to more of the umpire role uh, later on in our segment tonight. Um, one of the other reasons I, I asked you to come on tonight is, and we're kind of piggybacking off of my last episode, um, in the state of New Jersey, we don't have the use of instant replay anymore. Um, and the reason why I, I was talking about that last week is we've had a couple of hot topic issues going on in the state of New Jersey, in the high school sports world. Um, and most recent, we had a basketball game that there was a... <clears throat> a call that got overturned that replay could have helped out in that scenario. Um, and then going back, we had a couple scenarios where the replay, even in the college replay system, still didn't have the angles needed to possibly correct a missed call um, or a close call in, a, in essence. Um, so in Alabama, do you guys have a replay system? We do have a replay system. And I'll just kind of start where it started at. 
several years ago, and I, I can't remember the exactly time frame. We used to have spring games up at JSU, Jacksonville State University, which is about 20 to 25 minutes from where I'm at now. Matter of okay. fact, they won their first bowl game this past season when they moved up and was able to get in because there wasn't enough teams to get in the bowl season. Is, is, so, this, is this Walter he, Payne, Jacksonville State? No, this is Jacksonville State University where Rich Rodriguez is at now. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Yeah, Old Rich Rodriguez. head there. coach. Yeah, he's at Rich, Rich Rodriguez up at JSU now. So they started, they wanted to try it out up there for a spring game, and they encouraged the coaches to do it. Well, the next year, they come out with a rule that, hey, it's going to be, you know, they was going to have it in Alabama. Well, when they come out with it, of course, you had to sign up for it, and there was a substantial amount, of, there was a, a fee that go along with it. And I mm-hmm. don't know what that fee was because as official, it don't really matter. Yeah, it's out of our hands. You know. It's out of our hands. And so there were several schools that had it. And then I guess the first time I ever, I was on a game and you would see it, you know, you walk around the field and your, you know, your uh, pregame walk of the field, you would see it. And then, of course, the referee would go over there and, and it looked like a joystick, basically what kids play video games with, what it looked like. And you had a little booth and, you know, set up off the sideline away, you know, away from everybody. And it had a, security there so if you had to go over there you could be over there and nobody would mess with you uh, and so over the years I guess some teams got away from it and so okay. now the only time Alabama uses it now if like I we were talking earlier I don't know of any teams that currently have the replay in Alabama and I've asked people you know this week and the officials as I know and without trying to you know this bug people about it but I and there may be some in the Birmingham area and maybe some in the Mobile area and maybe some in the Huntsville area that have it that I'm not I'm okay. not aware about but in the state champ currently right now in Alabama the state championship games they do use replay and they have a challenge play and so two years ago or 2022 when I was on the crew you know we had to go we had to memorize what was what what could be challenged you know, they call it the challenge. You know, they had the little red hanky flag and they had to throw it out okay. there and all that. Luckily, on the game I had, we didn't have no challenges, but I could run through the list right quick. And it said, you know, I had to dig back through some emails. Uh, it said, what can be reviewed? And there's eight things that can be reviewed. Now, of course, automatic reviewed on every score and play, whether it was a PAT, whatever touchdown, that was automatically reviewed. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to run through this list. There's only eight or seven things besides that. So there's total eight things. It says ball or player in or out of bounds. Okay. Then I, as I just mentioned, okay. a touchdown. A touchdown or no touchdown, all, all scoring or potential scoring plays will automatically be reviewed. So there's no need for the challenge. Okay. Line of game reached or not reached. So you're looking at close or first down. All right. Catch or no catch. Okay. Fumble or no fumble, as well as possession of it. Was all right, another one was was a runner down or not down? Okay, here's one that's going to be that you know I had never seen it. And like, like I said, I'm reading these things off, and I've never actually been on a part of the game where the replay was actually used. Okay, but timing error as long as the time was embedded, embedded now in the replay, so it had to have it on the screen for you could correct the timer, and then. The last one is spot of the fo- spot of the football. Now, with all those, you're, those are still in play now for the championship games, correct? Correct. That's what they. That's what we used two years ago, twenty twenty two in Auburn. Now, with the inception of replay, um, and again, we we were probably around the same time frame with the inception. I don't. I think we were around twenty eighteen in New Jersey that we first started it. We were also doing it. Schools had the option of doing it during the regular season, too. Um, but the system that we had in place was through huddle. And the system was basically you had the end zone camera and you had a sideline camera at the 50-yard line. So with all the different reviewable plays that you were just discussing, first downs and, and ball spots and different things like that, we didn't have good angles. It was it was terrible because you had basically from the end zone view, which is the best coaching view that you could possibly have, and then you had the the upstairs view from the press box. But unless the ball's on the fifty yard line, 
you, you're never going to tell exactly where that spot was. And, and that was one of the problems with it. And on top of that, in order to replay it for, for us, uh, our referee was looking at an iPad on the sideline, the iPad that the, the coaches oh. use for huddle. So, um, so the, the state, the state got away from using that during the regular season and then they kept it for the bigger playoff game. So kind of like what you were just referring to this, um, I'm pretty sure it was the semifinal and I'm, I'm certain it used to be the finals also. And our games were right. either played at MetLife stadium, giant stadium, um, or Rutgers stadium. Um, so we would have the better angles and the better things, but it was still, it was mitigated of, of what they were allowed to challenge and scoring plays, like you said, were automatically challenged uh, or automatically reviewed, I should say. So well, in Alabama, they rotate the, as we were talking earlier in Alabama, they rotate the championship games. So, uh, Last year, this past football season, it was at Bright Denny, home of University of Alabama Christmas Tide, Roll Tide Road again. And this year, I'm going to get that in every chance I get because I mean, oh, I, that's fine. I, that's fine. I, and this year, it goes to UAB, home of the Blazers, which is in Birmingham, which is okay. a centralized, about center, it's, you know, about center of the state. And then following year, 2025, it'll go back to Auburn. So you got Alabama and you've got Auburn. But it's got SEC schools, so yep. they've got access to more camera angles there. How many is actually that they have? I have no idea. But there's one guy that sits up there and he watches those cameras. And when it's time, he and it's a uh, I'll say this he's a well established and he's called Mini State Championship Games and he's well known across the state. Uh, and he does a phenomenal job and as yep. far as you know, and that's his whole job for the week up there. Oh, that's it. That's excellent. Um, ha have you in the state with, with the system uh, and I, you again, you and I were talking uh, down in Alabama, all of the state championship games are televised um, and for free that, that people can watch it. So maybe not visually or personally being at the game, but have you ever seen something where you're like, oh, wow. And the, the replay, because. I mean, I watch games on Saturday. I watch games on Sunday in the, in the college and the NFL games. And there's times where review doesn't change the call or doesn't help out in a scenario that as we're watching from a TV angle, a TV angle could possibly pick up, but the replay angle doesn't have the right angle for it. So have you seen anything like that that possibly could talk about? Nothing that I can, that sticks out now. And I'll say this, a lot of times, now we got seven classifications in Alabama, okay? So they'll start it on Wednesday. They'll do the seven A game very first. And it's like at seven o'clock. A lot of times that's the only one I get to actually watch on TV. Now, a couple years ago, two years ago, they started flag girls flag football in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So they play that. They play that on Wednesday like what like at two or three o'clock, whatever time. Okay. And then they back it up with a seven A game. And then usually I go down. To where if it's in Tuscaloosa or if it's in Auburn, Tuscaloosa and Auburn both two hours from me. Birmingham's forty five minutes to an hour from me. So usually I go down and I'm already there. And I'll okay. stay I'll stay I'll stay and watch my I am there to watch six games, you know. Oh, and that's excellent. It can I and I, in Alabama it concludes on Friday night. Is it Friday night? Yeah, because you got Thursday night and on Thursday they do three games. It goes uh in Alabama it goes three A, one A, five A. And then on Fridays, it goes 2A, no, 4A, 2A, 6A. Okay. So they put the smallest classification in the middle. So you got 4A, then you got the 2A, and then you got the biggest class for that. What's left is 6A. Okay. I was gonna, just going to ask that. Is 7A would be your bigger, biggest schools population-wise, student body-wise? Yeah. 7A is you're going to have your, like, your Hoover. Everybody's heard of Hoover and Two a days and all that stuff off of MTV. But now I'm showing my age from years ago. But you got Hoover, you got Thompson, and you got oh gosh, uh, mm, I don't even know. You got several schools up around Huntsville. I mean, I don't really. And you got Gas and City. I think now is the seven A up in Gas, which is about thirty minutes from me. Okay. So you got you know their class is growing tremendously. Now. Do you feel, and again, this is this is purely just opinion based. 
are there do you feel like there's any negatives to it do you think that it's it's a it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing um one one of the debates that we've had in new jersey with the replay system um and i i do understand the mindset of it is sometimes the officials are going in with a different mindset that they're going to make a call to the point that okay that will be replayed instead of making the call how they initially see it and that's how I've always been trained. If you see it, throw it. If you don't see it, or it's not, or there's nothing there, keep it. Keep the flag deep in the pocket. Do you feel like anything like that could possibly be out there? Well, here's my here's my thing on the on the replay. Okay, we're all human. We're gonna make mistakes on the field. We've got yep. split seconds to make a decision: keep the flag in the pocket, or leave it, or throw it. Okay. Here's my thing on the replay. If the replay overturns a call and it's correct great job i'm all for it because at the end of the day you as a coach okay i've never coached okay i played years ago you know when i was in high school excuse me this holiday in alabama is whooping my tail right now but here's the thing at the end of the day the whole reason as me and you talked about earlier whole reason 90% of us or 95% of us, I don't know what the stats is, okay? The reason that me and you are talking now is to educate folks on officiating and it's at the end of the day, it's about these kids. Yes. So they can have an even playing field to go out and play the sport and build that brotherhood and build lifelong lessons, okay? Yep. If a replay gets the play correctly, I'm all for it. The, and again, I don't have a pen you know what you were asking? I'm all about these kids. That's the, you know, that's perfect. That it's not about these kids. It's time for me to hang it up, and get out of the way, and let somebody else come in. Because I don't go out there, and I've said this before. I say this in our thing. I don't go out there to be seen on Friday night. See how many flags I can throw, or any of that. I mean, you know, how many times I can get run over? Hey, I'm gonna be played a little shallow this time. Let me see, maybe I can get run over and get me some TV time or whatever <laughs> that means. I don't care about that. Nope. I'm going to do the same every play. I'm going to say the same thing every play, and we'll dive off into this when we talk about umpire stuff. But it, the whole, at the end of the day, it's about these kids. Yes, and sir. The day you quit Absolutely. caring about these kids, stay home. Yep, and that, that's it's not where... About pay. Uh, the, it's the, not about the, the pay. The pay helps a little bit. Get. I mean, the pay, the pay is not a nice it's bonus, the, but it's not about that. Uh, I mean, heck, if you get paid it's, it's per hour... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's about these kids. So, Jason, on that note, we're going to take a, a quick pause, um, and then when we come back, we're going to go. We're going to dive into our flagged facts, our little quiz game here. Um, so, give Jason a, a second to uh, go grab his uh, writing book and his rule book, so he can catch up on some rules. I'm going to try to trick him here with a couple of uh, a couple of questions. So, we'll take a quick pause, and when we come back, we'll we'll jump right into our, our flagged facts of the day. Hey, Whistle Talk fans, are you enjoying what you're listening to? Be sure to hit the like button so that you can join us every week as we break down the nuances of officiating that often go unnoticed. We want to hear from you, the passionate fans who make our game so special. Like what you hear? Hit the like button and let us know. Have a burning question or a hot take? Drop us a comment below to join the conversation. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're back here again with uh, Jason. Uh, Talking uh, Alabama football, and as we come back here, we're going to jump right into our flag facts, our whistle talk rule quiz. Jason, are you ready? Let's go. Let's say I've been, I ain't touched nothing since December. So, all right. I don't know. Let's let's get it. Let's see if I see if I pass this test. So, J Jason, being an umpire like myself, I was trying to pick some questions out that uh, questions that us umpires need to know here. So. <laughs> Question number one, K kicks off from the K 40 yard line while the ball is on the ground near the sideline. R 87 grabs the ball with one foot out of bounds, out of at, bounds the, at the 20 at the, yard line. What's your ruling here? Uh, what's my choices? Well, in this scenario, you're going to have four choices because the ball being yes, out of are. bounds the ball goes out of bounds, even with one foot inbounds and one foot out of bounds. This is a kick out of bounds. So your four options now are right. going to be A, can re-kick from the 35-yard line, so they'll go back five yards to re-kick it. 
A could take the ball first and 10 from the 25 yard line. So they'll get a, basically a five yard penalty tacked on to where the ball went out of bounds. I'm going to, I'm going to give Jason a little bit hint here. I'm going to skip over C and we're going to go to D. A could take the result of the play, which is the ball being kicked out of bounds. So we can scratch that one out right away. And C is A, first and 10 from the 35-yard line, which would be 25 yards from where the ball was kicked off from. So, Jason, what what would you pick here? You won't pick C on this scenario because that's going to make the correct answer. That is the correct answer. The, the, the second most common answer that we do have is some teams will elect to have the teams try to re-kick. Um, I, I've had games where they've made the teams re-kick the ball off three times if the kicker kept on kicking the ball out of bounds because they would back up five yards. And the teams were hoping that they're, uh, they had a stud kick returner that they were going to get their hands on the ball. And uh, historically, I've seen that come back to bite them in the butt, where if they just took it at the 35, they probably would have been better off. But, uh, yeah, Absolutely. they're going to probably take the ball at the 35-yard line. All right, so good job on that one. All right, question number two, another another multi-part question here. So, A, offense has the ball, A, first and 10 from the A's six-yard line. So they're backed up on their own six-yard line. Quarterback A18 drops back to pass the ball, and he's in his own end zone. While going back for the pass, A58 gets called for holding. Now, two scenarios are, he gets called for holding at the three-yard line or A58 gets called holding in the end zone. So, Jason, if the ball, if the penalty happened at the three-yard line, what would you have? Uh, where are those choices at? There we go. I'm going to tell you what I got. There we go right there. A. And then the second part of this question, you've got B, so it could actually be both. Yep. So you, you're going to have if the, if the hold happens in the end zone, it's a safety. The penalty that happens in the end zone, it is a safety. Uh, the first one now, we used to go and they changed it this year for us, kind of going with the college and the NFL rule that it, that the hold happened at the three yard line. We used to go ten yards from the spot of the foul. So if it wasn't half the distance in this scenario, which it is, we would be going basically 13 yards from the previous spot. But now it goes back to where the ball was previously spot. So the ball goes half the, ball the distance from the six-yard line, so it would make it to the three-yard line. So you'd get a first down in three scenario. So half the distance from the previous spot. I got you. All right. All right. So question number three. Great. And again, I ask these questions because we've got a lot of NFL fans that might be listening out there and a lot of college fans out there that might not uh, be familiar with the high school game. So, A, fourth down and five-yard lines from the B-22. A-10 throws the ball to the back of the end zone where wide receiver A-81 catches the ball with one foot landing inbounds, then the second foot landing out of bounds. What do you think we got here? Hey, as an umpire, we don't get to do this often. Give him six. Touchdown. (laughs) Yes, sir. That is a touchdown, 100%. And uh, 100%, we do not get to put our hands up too often. That that is saved for the short wings and the deep wing guys. And us umpires, uh, we're spotting the ball and getting the heck out of the way most of the time. (laughs) I think think I've only done it three times. Okay. And that was on a – that was on a – Busted on the when we was working a five man crew. On a five man crew, on a try, you cheat to the home side. It was a busted try play, and that's the only time you. That's the only time we get to do it. There you go. Well, well done, Jason. Thank you for for playing our little game mm-hmm. there. That was a great job. I'm going to uh, take this screen off there. So now it's just back to to looking at me and you here. So. Let's go back to uh, what we were talking about before. You and I are both umpires. So we are in the mm-hmm. middle of the field. Um, and again, for, for our fans out there that are NFL fans, that are college fans, the college game has gone to having the umpire now in the offensive backfield along with the referee. The NFL now also has the umpire in the backfield too with the referee, but then they have the center judge but still on the defensive side of the ball. So. Jason, give me give me an idea. 
pre-snap, what what are you thinking? What what are you doing pre-snap uh, after you spot the ball? What what's going on? What are you thinking? Well, I'm trying to watch what they're going to do. You know, usually before the game, we get our assignment sometime on Sunday or Monday, and I start watching film. Okay. I start getting on NFHS, huddle, whatever. You know, sometimes it may be a team that had the local game of the week, and then I can jump on their website and on their YouTube page and go watch some film on them if I don't already know them. But I'm going to watch film. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to watch their last game, and I'm going to see what they do a lot. So they're in the huddle, got the ball spotted. I'm getting out of there. As they're coming out of the huddle, I'm counting. Count every play. Some people stick, stick it. Some people stick stick it out like this right here. Mm-hmm. Alabama, you got your choice. You can stick it out like this right here, or you can do it like that. I'm right here, old school. I'm right here to show okay. the height. I see it. And so, as they come up, I'm watching. I'm watching to see what they line up in. They go down just one hand. I'm watching my keys. Uh, and when they go down and get set, that's when I get set. Okay. I don't and line up in the same spot every play. Just, just to clarify for our listeners, so Jason says he's counting. So it's the responsibility of the umpire and the referee. We're responsible for making sure that the offense has 11 players on the field. And once we see that, that 11th player and that it's not an illegal form, not an illegal formation or 12 men on the field penalty, we're given a, a punch sign. And, and for me, uh, I'm a big guy. My, my referee is a big guy, but I just like to put my hand kind of just straight up in the air. He and I just make a quick eye contact with so that we're both on the same page. Um, and we're solely responsible for counting the offensive guys at that point in time. For us in the state of New Jersey, our deep wings are responsible for, because of being a six man, our deep wings are responsible for counting the defense. So they're doing the same thing. They're punching to each other, that making sure that they've got 11 guys on the field. And uh, we do have signals, but we're, we're, we're not going to stop to play. But if we have 10 guys, I kind of, we give a little open hand, 10 uh, pat on the chest to each other. So we know that we've got 10 guys because if there's 10 guys, they might not have enough guys on the line of scrimmage. So then it's, triggers our short wings that, okay, you may have an illegal formation coming here. So it's just a uh, little communication things that we have with the hand signals. So we got 11 guys on the field. We get back to our spot. Tell me about your keys. Tell me what you're looking at now. Still, We're still at pre-snap now. Yeah. When they go down, I'm watching and I'm looking to see if they're going to, uh, you know, I'm watching to see if they're going to, Maybe I'm trying to read run run or pass. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to see if I'm going to read run or pass. Uh, and usually as soon as that ball snaps, you going to know. You better be in the right position. Mm-hmm. So if they go fire it off, you know, a lot of times if they're just down in a three-point stance, they're coming right back up. Now, if they're down both hands on the ground, they're usually going to fire off at you. Yeah. And so, you know, you just kind of read your keys and watch if it's going to be run or pass. If it's run, you know, you watch it for holding, chop blocking. Uh, I had a guy this past season in the, I guess it was his first round of playoffs. Offense lineman was firing off. He was grabbing, and he was getting his tail warped. He was grabbing a defense guy's legs and holding it. Oh, giving him the and old so, uh, gator yeah. ball? Yeah. I mean, he was grabbing, as soon as the ball snapped, he was reaching and grabbing and uh, so I got him on that. Uh, he said, I've been doing it all year. I was like, well, I'm sorry. You can't do it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a flag, flag all year. Yeah, you know. And so, you know, I'm reading my pass. And then on pass plays, you know, uh, if it's pass, you know, you're making sure, you know, you, you know, if we're at the 35, you know, I'm usually, if we're at the 35 and we're going in or going out, uh, I'm usually probably about the 40, 40, you know, 40, 42. So, you know, and it just comes with a repetition over time. The more snaps you get, you know how long it's going to take you to get that line of scrimmage down. If you see him, you know, five man, you definitely got to get to the line of scrimmage, you know, if he scrambles. Yep. On the seven man, you still got one of the wing guys that are holding, and so they can help you out there on the seven man. So here in New Jersey, our mechanic is we do not have the line of scrimmage anymore unless we're – Going in to the oh, to the goal to the end zone because then our short wings are doing a our reverse mechanic of going to the goal line first and working back. So we're going to help out with, and they still don't truly want us going to the line of scrimmage. Going to the where in the five man game, 
we're kind of floating opposite of the scram- uh, scrambling quarterback to make sure that that ball is thrown before they cross the line of scrimmage. So that's right. what we mean by having the line of scrimmage. So for us in New Jersey, that's typically going to be the short wings job on both sides. They're going to hold for us. Right. And if you can't get there, as long as you know where it's at, you know, if he's at yes. the 35 and you, and you know he, he's at the 34 or he's at the 36 or 37, when he releases it, hey, you know, you, hey, he's two yards beyond the line of scrimmage. You know, you yep. get, then you got something. So now you were mentioning your your keys. Now, I I know in in the States, we our rules are pretty much all the same. Uh, We're we're, for the most part in the United States, there's a few uh, states that are on their own. We're we're following the NFHS rule book, um, book. but mechanics Uh, do change a little bit from state to state. That's up to the state association. Um, So for me, pre-snap, my keys are going to be the guard opposite me. So basically the offensive right guard and then the rest of the linemen away. So guard, center, guard, tackle are my initial keys, and our referee is going to key on that right tackle pre-snap. Once the snap happens, I've got those linemen. The referee is going to go to the quarterback. So that's where my keys are going to go. So I'm looking for false starts. I'm looking to see any type of flinches from those guys. Uh, did they lift the hand up? Did they put the hand down? Snap infraction, that's another thing. So... Uh, you and I were talking again beforehand, and you mentioned you're never in the same spot. I, I, I kind of in, in the same same way. Um, I I learned from coaching. I was using the umpire as a pick. <laughs> so uh, I, I learned I'm going to change up my depth. I'm going to be between seven and nine yards uh, is going to be my depth, and I'm going to I'm going to try to read where the strength of the formation is, and, and maybe sometimes I'll go a little bit short side. But I'm always going to keep my keys in my sight, and I'm always keeping that football on my sight line. If there's ever a spot where I don't have the football on my sight line, I got to move. I had a quarterback one night, and I told you this before. I had a quarterback ping me about the air coming off me. Okay, I saw him. I had him a couple weeks later, and I said, "Hey," and I'm not going to call the kid's name, but he was real super nice about it. I said, "Hey, easy on me tonight." He just kind of laughed and he said, We did that on purpose because you just lined up the same spot. I said, I bet it don't happen tonight. <laughs> yep, you learned from it. Absolutely. Like I said, we, we used to call a double tight end to a pick route going across the middle. And if you couldn't pick off of each other, you were rubbing off the umpire. So somebody was going to pop up open. <laughs> so I, I learned that as a coach. I need to make sure that I'm, that I'm mobile. And you got to watch them, them slants coming across. And I'm going to tell you what, it don't take just a split second, you'll be leg whipped. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got, I got taken out on a punt this year because of that. <laughs> so oh, it, wow. it, it, it could be a little bit dangerous in there. It, it, it actually was kind of a, kind of amusing. Uh, the, the kid kind of rolled up on me and, well, my big butt ended up landing on him. And I felt bad for him because I think he was like a 130-pound sophomore that was getting some reps in on special teams. And he had my 250-pound butt landing on him. So we, oh, we wow. both laughed. And I said, that's going to look fun on film. So he, he got a chuckle out of it. But uh Luckily, I've been uh, rather unscathed in, in the middle of the field. But uh, I talk about that. I mean, we're in we're in the heart of it. The, the referee is kind of safe. The sidelines, you got some danger zones at the sidelines. But I mean, we're right in the thick of the game, right there. So to tell me, have you been run over? Have you been run into? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've got man. I I always say when you see them coming. When you see them jokers coming at you, just brace up, because it ain't gonna feel good. Just brace up. Yep. Look, I got ice packs. I keep ice packs in my freezer year round. Can I put my season? They get used on Friday nights when I get home. Oh yeah. I've got every size up there you can have. But yeah, you know, just brace up because you know it's gonna happen. None of us want to get hurt doing this. Luckily, knock on wood. Hopefully for yourself and many other officials out there. We've never been carted off. I should have been carted off one time, but I was too hard headed and I stayed out there. Yep. I mean, my ankle swelled up. My ankle swelled up like that right there one night, and I did the second half, and I was like, yep. "Ooh!" And then it was Labor Day weekend, and so, of course, stuff is closed on Monday. Okay. Thankful I knew a. Uh, thankful I knew a, a physical therapist. He came to the office on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and worked on me. And I was still able to very nice ball Friday night. Yeah, so so myself, 
being an old offensive lineman and being an old offensive line coach, I, I have a pretty good idea. I have a pretty good like idea. to think I have a pretty good idea of, of what's coming directly at me. So I kind of can read read some plays happening. My biggest fear of being an umpire is not what's coming straight at me, but it's what's coming from behind me. I've had uh, safeties coming running up and filling on a on a dive play right up the middle, coming trying to come right through me. So I, I've been, I've been pretty lucky with that. I've also had a couple times where uh, teams running power, and I'm seeing the hole just open wide up, just parting like the Red Sea, and I see the running back coming straight for me. And I swear, I could have seen this kid smiling behind his mouth guard because he knew he was going to run right at me and take his cut right off of me. And I ended up seeing him uh, a couple weeks later, and I'm like, you did that on purpose. He's like, absolutely, sir, I did that on purpose. So he, he was good yeah. about it, just like you were talking. He, he was very polite about it, but he's like, absolutely, I used you. I saw that open up. He's like, I knew I wasn't going to get tackled right there. I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough. I've got a, I've got a picture that, uh, who was it? I think it was actually our signer. He took, when he came to the state championship game, and I'm getting hit in the end zone. And it was a split second. And he showed it to me. Uh, and I'll send it to you in a private message or later on. But it was a, I'm getting hit in the end zone. And you go back and watch it on film. And it's a split. How in the world he got that picture, I have no idea. I, was ah. able to take it. I mean, it was just perfect. And the kid was like, he blocked me. And it, what happened was, it was on the goal line play. I think it was about the five, maybe. He's getting blocked, and when he gets blocked, he blocks another guy, and he blocks a defender into me. Mm -hmm. And the kid was like, I guess the, 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 he was like, hey, you're not going to flag him? No, you blocked him into me. He didn't, hit, yeah. you know, he didn't run into <laughs> me on purpose. He got blocked into me. I was, you know, and I was in perfect position. I could have been a little bit deeper, but I felt like I was in perfect position at that time for that play. But thankfully, I didn't get hurt. I mean, I got hit, but, you know. I'll send this picture to you later. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, absolutely. I'd love to. So now that you cool. actually had a, a perfect lead into my next question that I wanted to ask you, and I don't even think you, you, you meant to do it, but uh, the kid's talking to us. Gosh. The kid's talking to us in the middle of the field. Talking to us in the middle of the field. All night long. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how much fun is that? <laughs> That's fun. Building a relationship with these kids. A lot of these kids now that you're calling and I'm calling, we started calling them when they was – you know, junior high, maybe even Pee Wee League, and then they've come up, you know, as they got older, they've got to the varsity level. And, you know, a lot of them know, hey, Jason ain't going to put up no crap in there. And, uh, you better not, you know. The coaches know, too. He was a former yep. coach. You knew which official that you could, that would, you could get away with something with. Yep. And most of them, and I hate, you know, I don't mind saying this, most of them, most of, most of all ours know that, hey, that's not touching the slot. I mean, you know, he's going, if it's there, he's there. Now, you know, the safety, if the safety, a face mask or something, like, you know, you got to get that. Yeah. Early in the season, I believe in, and I'm sure you do too, I believe in preventive officiating. Okay. Uh, a thousand percent. They're going to have the jitters. To talk about to talk about they, got, they got the kids that got the jitters. His first part of the game, this is the middle of August when we start, or toward the end of August. It's 120 degrees. They got them pads on and all that crap out there. Of course, we got heat timeouts and all that stuff here in Alabama. He may hold. Hey, this is a Jamboree game. Yep. Hey, 75. I seen you holding right there. Watch them hands. Prevent it. I do a lot of, and I've been told I do too much of preventive officiating. Oh, well. uh, I, I'm, I'm in the same mindset. I'm, I'm I'd rather go mindset. in and, and talk with the kids. But as you get later in the season and as the games get bigger and bigger, that warning is going to be, okay, 75, next time I'm going to bang you, keep the hands inside. Or if it's a point right. of the attack type of play, we're going to, we're going to bang that. The safety fouls, they're no-brainers. We're, we're, we're looking for those 100% <laughs> of the time. But right. coaches, you're going to have coaches that are going to say he was being held every single play, every play he was being held. And I'm like, well, coach, if, if they're running a toss sweep to the right and your left defensive end or your right defensive end, I should say the opposite side, is getting held, He's not part of the play at that point in time. I'm not going to call a holding penalty on like that you, one. Like you said, point of attack. Appreciate point of attack. And then once the, and I'm sure you do the same thing. Once the ball passes you and it gets in the, gets over what we call the flats, and then your backside appreciate, and then you're looking yep. for the cheap stuff. Yep, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So th those are, you're looking for the point of the attack fouls. You're looking for for the ball. Um, I don't know about you. Come snap. 
I'm spitting my book whistle out of my I'm mouth. My I don't blow my whistle pretty much the entire game unless it's a pre-snap penalty. So we, uh, I, I leave those whistles to, to, to the short wings. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't, years ago, I changed and I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll keep one in my back pocket. Yep. As my backup. I went to the finger whistle. Okay. I love it. I love it. And I probably got in my whistle bag, I probably got, and this, I'm not exaggerating, I probably got eight or 10. Wow. I got a backup. Yeah, I mean, you got to think, you know, over the years, as long as we've been doing this stuff, I'm going to keep a whistle. If it gets cracked, you know what? Oh, I'll throw it away. But well, I got you on the right whistle. show. I got you on the right show. Whistle talk. So. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. But, yeah, I, I, so when I'm in the middle of the field, I, I'll use the lanyard. I have it buckled to my, my zipper on my, my shirt. Once the ball is snapped, I'm just popping that out, letting it dangle. I actually do keep a finger whistle on my hand, too, uh, just like you said, as a backup, just in case there's something egregious where I need to get, lay on the whistle, extra pushing and shoving, the extracurricular stuff. But uh, other than that, I, I'm putting my hand up in the air and, and showing, the, showing the side guys, hey, I, I got them down here. But ultimately, they're the ones that are going to have the best angle if the knee was down, forward progress was stopped. And then from there, I'm verbally going in and I'm officiating. All right, guys, let them off, roll off, use the ground, different things like that. Are you the same way? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I'm not hoarse when I walk off that field or the next morning or Saturday morning, I feel like I haven't done my job. Yep. So every play, I am saying, guys, roll off each other, push off, don't push off each other, roll off each other. Good run, good tackle. Good run, good tackle. Hey, and if you see something, you, nine times out of ten, chaos is going to start in the middle. As an umpire, if you control that middle, yep. nine times out of ten, you're not going to have no problems in the ball game. as far as extracurricular stuff happens. The jawing and stuff like that, big rival games, you got to get you got to get that early. Yeah, you got absolutely. To get that early. You got to, you got to nip that in the bud, and not just as an umpire, but everybody on the crew has to nip that in the bud early. And again, that, that, that comes back to the preventative. Uh, our crew, uh, as a crew, and, and I told you, we, we've been together for three years now. We, we have a good rapport with each other. We would rather go a game without having any flags on the field and just manage the game oh, and yeah. talk the kids through the game. The and, and live ball fouls with our crew are, are, are safety fouls and point of the attack fouls. We're not going to look to nitpick on the stuff like that. Your pre-snap fouls, you have to call them. Now, those are the ones that everybody sees, the flinches, the motions, the different things like that. Those ones are are, are the no-brainers. But other than that, I, wa I want to verbally officiate the game. Uh, I, I was taught at a, at a young age, we're there to, to spot the ball and keep the game going, keep the game moving, let the kids play football. So that's what we try that's to do. Is, well, and go back to what I was saying earlier. What is some the whole reason we're in this about these kids. For the kids. Absolutely. So, Jason, I got just one last uh, question, one last little topic I want to touch on. I've, I've kept you on here long enough. Um, but you had mentioned before about training and developing and that, that you work with the umpires. What are you, what are you guys doing in, in the state of Alabama to recruit more officials into, into this business? Because I know in Jersey – um, our numbers are starting to go back up, which is a, which is a great positive. But we took a big hit with the COVID years, and, and our numbers did dwindle. And we're we're still feeling the effect of that now. Uh, but we are on the positive rise of, of getting uh, more officials out there. What are you guys in Alabama doing uh, recruiting wise, and how are your numbers down there? Well, first of all, congratulations on getting your numbers back up because I think that's what everybody, anybody that wears the stripes is after four to get the numbers back up. Yep. State of Alabama, AHSAA, Mr. Ken Washington, the fine folks at the state office in Montgomery, have come up with a have come up with a recruiting committee. And I'm not sure exactly how they're doing it down there, but it's for all sports, okay? Locally, here in Anderson, at East Alabama football officials, we have a thing coming up on the 13th of April. Uh, it's called Noble Street Festival. And uh, so they'll have to draw 10 to 15,000 folks downtown Anderson, uh, Alabama. And so they'll have these bot races, professional bot races. But on the other side of it, they'll set up like a festival. And so we can okay. set up an information booth. And so we'll set up a tent. And, it, you know, the city charges us a very small fee. And, I, mm -hmm. you know, 
bucks, 40, 50 bucks, whatever the city cost charges. But it's well worth it. Now, when we started it three years ago, it was during COVID or four years ago, it was during COVID. Uh, there was something going on. They had to move it because of COVID or something. Yep. So we had great success with it because we was within a week before we started fishing, started back meeting. And so now it is, like I said, it's the 13th. We'll go back to July. I have somebody that's done a flyer, a flyer for us. Okay. A lady from, uh, what is it called? Game day graphics, high school game day graphics or something. I want to be sure I get the right plug for her on here. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, and hang on a second. But what we do is she she looks, I mean, she, she does the graphics for us. Let's see. I'm trying to find it. But in regardless, she does the, she does the, the, uh, the flyer for us every year. Okay. And so we, we're, we're sitting there. We have officials there. We have a, a veteran. And we'll have a first or second year guy. And he'll come out and they'll, people come up down the street and we'll just talk to them about officiating. We don't, you know, not saying a first or second year couldn't answer every question, but hey, we want a veteran there as well. Will. Absolutely. People come up and want to talk about, offici- talk about officiating. And so we'll get their information, their name, email address, and phone number, and all that, who they talk to. And and on the flyer, it's got an email address. And it, the flyer this year has actually already got the date and the time for the first meeting. That's awesome. how much we're already looking forward to the season. And so, and then word of mouth. I mean, word of mouth. Talk to your people at your local fitness centers. Uh, yep. Another avenue I tried this past year that didn't really have much success, and I might have started it too early. The kids that are graduating at the end of this school year, those seniors, 3%. Three percent of those kids go to the college level. Absolutely, one percent. One percent of that out of the college that makes it to the college level makes it to the NFL. So that's the kids that you want that are play football. Get them come out. And I might have started it too early this year. I did, you know. But you want to contact those schools, those principals, those ads, those head coaches. Hey, give give me a time. You know, find somebody in your association, a retiree or somebody that's got off on Fridays. A lot of people work four tens. I'm, you yep. know, whatever. Find somebody in your association that can go out and try to talk to these kids. I did it last year a couple of times. Uh, and, you know, we're trying to do it again this year. So I don't know how, you know, it may work and it may not. But you've got to, you got to think outside the box. This is going to be the, the the one and only time that I'm going to disagree with you. You didn't start too early because I don't think you can ever start too early with the recruiting aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that idea of going to the schools and, and getting the kids fresh out of high school, fresh out of college. We need the young blood. We need need the energy and we need that willingness to, to, to learn and to still grow this awesome sport that we're involved in. Jason. I much appreciate you coming on the show tonight and taking the time out of your busy schedule. Really do. Uh, this was a fantastic interview. Um, again, put a, give me another plug. April 15th. Where where can people find you on April 15th? Hey, April 13th. Oh, April, April 13th. 15th. Thank you. Day. That's the day everybody better pay Uncle Sam by April, thir- April 15th. This is two days before you got to pay Uncle Sam. But, hey, it's a free event. Anniston, Alabama, downtown Noble Street. And I'm going to put this on. By this time, this thing will be... We'll have it. I'll have it. Absolutely. I'm going to put it on my social media page. And I'm going to give it to some other people and let them get it out for us as well. But April 13th, Noble Street, downtown Anston, Alabama. We'll be there. I think I'm going to have our official of the year, rookie of the year last year. I, he don't know, but Tyler, I'm going to call you. <laughs> want him to come out. Because that's how we got him last year. He come to this thing. Awesome. And progress up to the ranks. And, and he, done a, he had a phenomenal job. And I want to add one more thing since we're talking about our, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff. But during our regular season, our training guy, Devin Berry, he is a, he works for the County Board of Education, does the the IT stuff, but he is a phenomenal, and that's the unsung heroes of all this stuff. He's responsible for all the training for our our association. He's got, you know, each position. But Devin Berry from East Alabama, and, you know, does a phenomenal job, not only him, but our board members allow us to go out. And I can, and I'm just going to name on it. It's Tom Pratt, or you got Eric Brown as our president, 
Uh, Devin Barry is our vice president over training. You got Noel Stevens is our uh, Noel Stevens is our signer, and then you got Tom Pratt, and then we got five board members, myself and uh, four others. Okay. Uh, and then you know they all all just work together for one reason: it's about these kids. Get out, and support these kids, support these officials. We all make mistakes, but at the end of the day, we're here for the same reason: these kids. Hundred percent, Jason. Thank you again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for tuning in to uh, another episode of Whistle Talk. Uh, one more time, Jason Boatman, East Alabama officiating crew. Thank you very much for, for coming on. And again, go out, support them. If you're interested, on the bottom of, uh, of the show, I will have those tabs and those, uh, those links that Jason was referring to. I'll also have them for the state of New Jersey for my, for my local folk here if they're looking to get involved in the state of New Jersey. So I'll have the Alabama information, the New Jersey information, and even the, the National Federation information will be posted on there. So go out there, have some fun, be a part of the game, learn, listen, enjoy it. Thank you once again, Jason. Truly do appreciate having you on tonight. Hey, I, I enjoyed it. Anytime, just let me know anytime you need me to come back on or whatnot ever. This has been a blast. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Whistle Talk, where we unravel the fascinating world of football officiating. If you enjoyed today's discussion and want to stay in the loop with the latest insights, be sure to subscribe to Whistle Talk on your favorite podcast platform. Stay connected with us by following Whistle Talk on social media, where we share behind-the-scenes glimpses, updates, and engage with our incredible community of officiating enthusiasts. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Just search for the words Whistle Talk. Your support means the world to the show, and we'd love to hear your thoughts, questions, or suggestions for future episodes. Drop us a line through our website or message me on social media. I'm always eager to connect with the fellow fans and continue the conversation. Until next time, keep blowing the whistle on the untold stories and nuances of football officiating. Thanks for being a part of the Whistle Talk family. This is Mike D., the referee, saying so long for now.